I'm Gloria Strode and welcome to Straightforward. Today we're going to have a follow-up conversation with our school board representative at large, Kia Chambers, and joining us for this conversation today is the chair of the Alternative Education Committee uh, project, Tali Strode Jr. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thanks All right. for having us. Well, you were here last and we talked about uh, how we were going to involve the community and take a look at what was happening in Muskogee County School District with alternative education. Absolutely. Uh, Camelot was on the table and we're not here to try and discredit them in any way, but we want to talk about how we moved from Camelot to the committee and then the findings. Okay, so share with our parents, grandparents and our audience what's going on. Um, well, the purpose of the committee was to come together and allow the community an opportunity to sort of weigh in on um, their thoughts on alternative education. Um, anytime you're dealing with um, anyone's children, uh -huh. you want to make sure that we um, have a voice for the parents and a way for the community to sort of weigh in. So the purpose of the committee was to do just that, to allow those voices to be heard uh -huh. because they're all of our children and we wanna make sure that we're providing the best education for them here okay. in Muskogee County. And so when we say alternative education, who's in that pool? Okay. okay. Well, we were dealing with um, three different sets of students. Uh -huh. One was um, special needs students. The other was over um, age under accredited uh -huh. um, students. And um, we were also dealing with students from alternative education. Okay. And so we had three different groups right. that we needed to address issues. Right. Okay. Three different groups uh -huh. that have three different needs, in my opinion. Uh -huh. And so the purpose of the committee was sort of to dissect what we had in place um, and then to see where there were sort of loopholes and to, to give some voice to what they thought were need, was needed for okay. those students. And so how did we put together the committee? Okay. I think that's important to let all okay. of our viewers and our parents and grandparents know it wasn't a Kia Chambers that selected everyone no. for this committee. How was that process? Well, the process was first the board had to agree. Yes. Um, so we had to agree that this was something that was needed, mm -hmm. um, something that the board members wanted to hear from the community. And overwhelmingly, the board members decided that, yes, we did want to hear from the community. And we wanted to give the opportunity to them to mm -hmm. sort of um, be a part of the conversation. Okay. So that was first. Um, the second thing was each board member was asked to appoint someone to serve on the committee. Um, so it was a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. and um, the committee worked really hard, and I think um, they have some great things to share. Okay, and so each board member mm -hmm. appointed someone yes. to serve on the committee. Absolutely. And then in addition to that, we had other community resource volunteers. Absolutely. Is that correct? Yes. So that included, what? who else was included? What type of other service providers did oh, we, we have? Had, uh, social service? Social services, uh, DFACs in particular. Uh -huh. uh, we had people that have a intimate knowledge of what's going on in the yeah. community, have dealt with a lot of the issues associated with alternative education. Uh -huh. And uh, we had some people that were proactively trying to work on the same issue. In particular, uh, a group of citizens got together and they started up a, a parent and community group before this one formed uh -huh. and started to head down that uh, path of trying to understand what's really going on with alternative education in Muskogee County Schools and Kia was uh, a, a part of that initial uh -huh. meeting and we think we use that as a, a stepping stone to help shape what the alternative education uh, committee uh, accomplished. Okay, and so we actually, in that parent group, they were having IEP meetings and uh, parent meetings for ch uh, those that had children with special needs and, and other yeah, types of things. everybody was involved in that right. also. So the parents, they were already working on that, and right. so you became a part of that, and then you said, yes, we need to make this a larger, more inclusive Right. movement so all uh, districts would be represented at the table right. Right. for the a, input. And, and the key thing is, is as the at-large representative uh, uh, Ms. Chambers recognized that there was energy uh -huh. uh, to go on and address this in a more holistic way so yes we had uh, parents in that group uh, that had children with behavioral 
issues. Mm -hmm. We had uh, uh, parents in there with children who had special needs. Mm -hmm. And then there were parents in there uh, that had interest in uh, uh, the age risk of right. students. And then you just had this groundswell of community uh, engagement because the solution that was proposed, they didn't feel like that was the be in the best interest of all of children, the community, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and from that, uh, not because of that, but from that, mm -hmm. uh, there was a committee formed uh, and endorsed by the school board, and we did our work, and uh, here we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's very important, uh, and sometimes because we are informed, we think that everyone else is informed, and people hear bits and pieces in the community. And so today, I just wanted to make sure that we covered the who, what, when, where, how, and why. Right. And so, as you said, we were looking at three different groups, uh, those that needed therapeutic daycare. That was a, a different yes. group from those that maybe Our were behind on their credits for graduating and those that might have had some type of behavior, behavior, behavior concern. Fine. Okay, and so um, we did have input from the principal from AIM, and, and AIM is the alternative AIM. school. Yes. And so that's where a lot of the, the population is. Of course, even when they go to AIM, many of the students get to go back to their regular school. Right. Right, so some are there, not, it's not a permanent thing for everyone, it's a short term. Right. Right, and I do know that because I was once a juvenile tracker <laughs> and I would have to go to the alternative schools and, and track the kids and then once right. they got back on track, then they went back to their home school. Right. Not home school at home, but their school of assignment. Right. You know, and I, I think you bring up a good, uh, uh, not a good, but a great point. Mm -hmm. We have people working in the Muscogee County School District that are doing their job, mm -hmm. that are great mm -hmm. at what they do. So this wasn't an indictment of Muskogee County School District. This wasn't an indictment of, of Camelot. Mm -hmm. This was a more holistic look mm -hmm. at how we can do this better. And it's very important, and hopefully uh, uh, that we did this, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about that reason why later on in the uh, program. Right, because we have wonderful, you were a teacher yourself. Absolutely. You were in the classroom at Hannon Elementary, and so you've seen it up close and personal. So we have great talent in terms of our teachers. Absolutely. We have wonderful children. We have great families. We just needed to put all of the things on the table, find the best resources so we could move the all community. All of the shareholders, for, all of right. the people that have a, a, a vested, vested interest. interest. Okay. put them in the room and get okay. their input and okay. come out with a more holistic solution. Okay, well, okay. what we're gonna do is hold that thought. We're okay. gonna go to our sponsors <laughs> and we'll be right back. Okay, sounds okay. good. We'll be right back after work from some of our sponsors. Straight Forward is brought to you by Chalk by Quincy introduces excellence redefined. Tying pieces of the finest technology, luxury, and class with tons of style at chalklifestyle.com. Renal Associates, LLC, a team of physicians dedicated to excellent kidney care with five convenient locations to serve you. Stark Avenue, Columbus, Bradley Park, Columbus, Lafayette Parkway, LaGrange, East Burkhalter Avenue, Buena Vista, and Spring Street in Warm Springs. A second chance criminal record relief. Laws have changed in your favor. Attorney Jennifer Dunlap is offering assistance in removing felony and misdemeanor convictions from your record. Services are available for a limited time only. Call Attorney Dunlap today to see if you qualify at 706-405-0393 or visit secondchancelaws.com. Walmart's reason for supporting Thurgood Marshall College Fund is simple. We like to win. And we have been given a lot of exposure to some, to some incredible talent. And we also believe that it's a part of our responsibility to the community to give back. This is a great opportunity to do both. It's been a wonderful experience for us through the years. We've appreciated our partnership. We believe in return on investment, and we have definitely had a remarkable return.
welcome back to Straightforward. We are continuing this very important conversation with our school board representative at large, Kia Chambers, and the chair of the Alternative Education Committee, Tolly Strode Jr. And before we went to the break, we yes. were just getting into some very good points. There was something you wanted to stress yes. about Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. I wanted to stress the fact that this was not your typical committee. Okay. This was a committee made up of people who had first-hand knowledge of dealing with these students. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go to people who were dealing with these situations on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So there were retired teachers on the committee. There were parents who had um, students with or children with special needs uh -huh. and of course we had defects involved who deal with um, a lot of these kids on a day-to-day -day exactly. basis. Exactly, families and so children on a key. daily right. basis. Right. So the, the committee was made up of the people that we needed to bring to the table uh -huh. to get a good honest look at what, what was occurring. Okay, so. all right. And so you know you had this big assignment and the mission and so you all came together yes. and you had many meetings over many over several months right yeah we uh, first we had a I think a very dynamic committee comprised of uh, nine appointees representing each one of the school the school uh, each one of the districts mm -hmm. and at large mm -hmm. and uh, so it was those nine people and then we had um, uh, approximately seven uh, Community resource. servants, right. community resources, wraparound service people. That's right. right. You know that mm -hmm. had uh, experience with everything from behavioral issues to special needs, mm -hmm. and even children that have been in the juvenile justice system. Absolutely, you had someone there that I know work mm -hmm. ongoing with that because I've worked with that person over the years as well at Project Rebound. Right. right. So you have you know about approximately 17 people with different views, different ideas that came together mm -hmm. and in 90 days came up with a series of recommendations to the school board mm -hmm. um, and it's up to it's up to the school district to act on those uh, act on those recommendations and some things may you know giving credit to the people that we work with and the things we heard about them already doing mm -hmm. you know some of these things may be already underway to a degree right uh, however there's a lot of things that are not in place mm -hmm. and for us to have a premier and I stress the phrase premier mm -hmm. uh, alternative education system for Muskogee County we have to put all of the building blocks in place and right. we need to resource that infrastructure mm -hmm. because one of the problems that we came up with is this the, 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 the consolidation solution was at the back end of a bunch of stuff that's happening in the school district and we came to the conclusion early on, hey listen, the reason why parents are frustrated is because this isn't in place on the front end of the process. Right. The reason why teachers are seeing things uh, happen in the classroom is because the front end Mm -hmm. uh, issues are not being uh, addressed, addressed right uh, in a quality fashion mm -hmm. so let's take a look at this thing holistically and what if we put these things in place uh, on the front end mm -hmm. do we feel confident that we won't need a place to take these children and get them right. services things of that nature on the back end right and I believe that that is the strategic choice that the school the school board is going to have to make do right. we deal with the basic causes of the problems that were faced or are we going to continue to treat the symptoms of those pro of those problems right so this committee with all of the experience and just looking at those individuals on it you have hundreds of years of experience yes. because we have few retired teachers and between those two is probably about 80 years i mean they're probably uh, get on me about that when i run into them in the public but i'm just saying that in jest but even with those educators that's been in the classroom, so they were able to identify, yeah. being on this committee, some things that you all should have in place, we should in the school district, on the front end. Mm -hmm. And if we can plug all of those holes, then that's going to save us a lot of time and money on the back end. Absolutely, and right. the big gain for the school district is the special needs, the, the behavior issues, they're, they're not and isolated on this island. Mm -hmm. There are other issues that if you put all of the things in place that deal with those issues, yes. you will be dealing with a bunch of other things too, mm -hmm. such as bullying. Right. And, and, and we gotta look at, again, this whole issue holistically. 
and deal with the infrastructure and the resourcing that has gone lacking over time, mm -hmm. deal with that, and then hopefully we'll resolve not only this, but all of the other issues that are going on in the school district. And, and many of them, if not all of them. I, I know we're in a place of you know, new age and technology and all of that, but there are still some things that technology cannot do. So if we have children and if we just put them in a classroom and everybody is working on a computer, well, for the person that might get overstimulated, that might not be a good thing to expect that that person could sit there for two hours, you know, and just continue and not be disruptive. So we have to start taking a closer look at things mm -hmm. and it's not a one size right. fit all, which you said Absolutely. that before, yes. you know, even as a classroom teacher, you knew Absolutely. that. You knew that each student, even in elementary school, who could focus longer than the other person. Right. Then we have to look at that a lot of the children are on medications. That is another thing that once upon a time in my age, we didn't have that, you know, but we do have a lot of children that are on medications for different things now. And so all of that has to be addressed on the front end. Right. right. Uh, and we keep seeing clips and clips and clips on social media where children with autism, a lot of times they have been um, missed or they fell through the cracks. And so when they might have an episode, then it might escalate into something with law enforcement, whereas if we had all of the resources on the front end, it would be quickly identified. Right. right. And we didn't get here mm -hmm. in a week. Right. We got here over decades of changes changes in the laws, changes, right. changing, changes in our ability to resource some of the uh, requirements. We got here for a reason. Uh -huh. And what we're trying to do again is take a step back and look at, okay, what needs to change for us to get more in step with, more in tune with the reality of what's going on in the school? Uh -huh. Where you have students, for example, this was identified by one of our resources, uh -huh. students who are actually living in group homes. Right. And they, and they have come a, to school with not only those challenges, but they but have a whole nother group of social issues. Exactly. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is take our final break, go okay. to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Okay. We'll be right back after word from some of our sponsors. <laughs> Straight Forward is brought to you by Warrior Outreach. Contact Command Sergeant Major Retired Sam Rhodes or Kathy Rhodes. Freedom Printing for all of your designer printing needs. Gunboat Plaza, Suite 18. Thai Thai Cuisine, the area's only authentic Thai restaurant. Open for lunch and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Located in the Village Green Shopping Center on the 280 Bypass in Phoenix City. Progressive Funeral Home, Family owned and operated since 1952. The George Ford legacy of high standards continues today in the compassionate and professional services provided. A touch of dignity for those who care. Progressive Funeral Home, 4235 St. Mary's Road, trusted by generations. Best Care, transforming minds and bodies, leading the way in the latest techniques of medical weight loss and wellness. Certified in family medicine and bariatrics, Dr. Blunt is ready to assist in the transformation of your mind and body. Call today, 706-221-6477, or visit bestcarecolumbus.com. East Alabama Endocrinology, educating and caring for those living with diabetes in Alabama and Georgia. 1400 Bradley Lake Boulevard, 3320 Skyway Drive, Suite 602, Opelika. Take charge of diabetes and live your best life. History is important because it shows where you're coming from and where you're going. Type 2 diabetes is something that runs in my family, which means I'm at risk. In fact, one in three American adults are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. And knowing this, if I do nothing, that family history becomes my family's future. And my family is too important to me for that. Take the risk factor assessment today at AskGreenKnow.com. And welcome back to Straight Forward. We are continuing our conversation about alternative education and the recommendations of that community group and our school board at large. Yes. Member Kia Chambers, you have been involved yes, on the front line because you are a mother, you are a former educator, yes. and you know what it is to be in the classroom. 
Absolutely. All right. And so through this process, there were a lot of other people involved other than just Absolutely. our community resources and the, the appointees. We actually had people from the district. Absolutely. And, okay. and before we move to that, I just want to say that if there's anything that I'd like to see come out of this, I would like the public to understand how inclusive this process was yes. and how a much collaboration went into what comes out of this committee. Mm -hmm. So we did have not just the community members present, but the media came to the meetings. Yes. I was at several meetings. Mm -hmm. And then we had um, Mary Lewis from the school district. We had Dr. Vickers there. We had um, Dr. DeBose there as well. So there okay, were and, several. And just share with our audience what role those individuals play in the district to yes. help parents understand. So you had a plethora of experience there from mm -hmm. the director of special education okay. to um, the person over student services to the person who deals directly with discipline and, and directly with Ames. So you had several people from the school district that the superintendent sent over to the meetings to ensure that the committee had what they needed in uh -huh. order to make informed um, suggestions. Uh -huh. So um, the collaboration was there and I think that it is the message should be sent to the public that these are all of our children. Yes. And so this was a inclusive type thing. It was open to the public. Mm -hmm. So anyone who wanted to be engaged could have been engaged. Whosoever will. And I want to personally just take a moment to thank our mm -hmm. chair, mm -hmm. Mr. Tolly Strode, and all of the members of the committee because they gave up hours and hours of their time yes. for our children. And, it, and no one was paid about. to do this. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. I always <laughs> like to put that <laughs> out there. Absolutely. You know, because sometimes as things go around, around in, in the community, you know, it's yeah. misinformation. But this was a volunteer uh, effort of love. Love for the uh, kids. And for those of us that don't have kids in the school system, many of us are grandparents or we have other family members. And what I learned over my 30 years as a social worker is if we don't equip them on the front end, Absolutely. it's going to cost Paying when they the cannot Absolutely. be productive, contrib contributing citizens on the back end. And so that's why this whole movement was so important. You know, I, I really think, uh, uh, and thank you for the, for the compliment oh, there, uh, Kia, but, you know, it starts with leadership. Mm -hmm. And if uh, Ms. Chambers had not stood in her place mm -hmm. and uh, worked with the school board members to come up with this opportunity uh, to serve the community, we would not have gotten out of the gate. If she had not been there and shown an interest in uh, what we were doing and communicated by being there the importance of it, and that goes with Ms. Vickers, who attended one of our one of our meetings and then responding to the request for information. You right, because other committee me members were requesting information from the district, from the district and they were and providing and the and information. Responding to it, mm -hmm. you know, in a timely fashion. I think that we. Uh, we would not have come out with the solutions that we've recommended, the action steps that we've recommended to uh, the school board and school district. And a key, a key piece in this that, and these are some unsung heroes, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Uh, J. Aleem Hud mm -hmm. and uh, Mary Ann Young served as uh, leaders of work groups that went out and took a more specific look at some of the issues uh, special needs and then in the, in the behavior, behavior area right and those subgroups got together uh, we had three major meetings but there were like 11 or 12 ongoing ongoing meetings subgroup place, meetings you know. where people were coming together bringing yeah. information sharing so, and coming yeah. up with best practices and, oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and meeting with uh, some of the school district representatives to get information this is probably you know, if you have arrows pointing all over the place, uh -huh. I think at the end of the process, all of those arrows were aligned on trying to deliver on a premier alternative education system uh, for the school district. And again, thank you for, Absolutely. number one, demonstrating the courage and then sticking with us through the process because, you know, it It, it, it means was over something. several months. Over, yeah. <laughs> over yeah, several yeah, months. Yeah, we did this in 90, in 90 days, uh -huh. actually. But the whole process of getting to a point where we could even do the first meeting, mm -hmm. it took a lot of stick to mm -hmm. if, that, if that's a word. Right, you know, right. To go on and help guide the, the, the school board and the school district to a point where we could even have the first meeting. Right. 
And so the parents and the children, the children of the district are the ones that will benefit from that. Absolutely. And then uh, the, the families, it makes life yes. better at home. You know, I, I want to I make this one point too, mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to read from this because it's a lot, but the uh, U.S. Department of Education Office of Special Education and Rehabilitative Services continued its survey and it assigned a needs assistant designation for the state of Georgia in 2017. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the state has a broader issue that it's trying to grapple with. Mm -hmm. And because of this, we may end up being able to help the state with an example of how you implement alternative education in the state of Georgia. Right. If we go about this the right way, and right. that's the key. Right. So we've done the work of identifying what to do now the hard stuff starts and that's right. doing the work. Okay, and so at some point, you know, the, the final report has been delivered. That yes. report was delivered. September 1st as promised. Okay, yeah. and then so you all have that and you all will take a look at it and at some point there will be a yes. public presentation that parents might be able to come and, and hear firsthand. Yes. I knew we didn't have enough time to go over all of the bullets today, yes. but I just wanted you to give us an update. I wanted yes. our parents to know as the at-large representative, you're working. Even if they I'm don't see you working, kids. you are fighting Absolutely. for the kids <laughs> daily. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so daily. if anyone has any questions, uh, of course, uh, you represent everybody. Yes. So that's from Fort Benning all the way, not on but, Fort Benning, right, but Muscogee at the County. Muscogee County yeah. line of Fort Benning all the way uh, to County Line Road. Yes. How can they reach you? Yes, they can reach me directly, and I'm going to give you my um, personal cell phone number. Oh, wow, that that's okay? brave. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my cell phone number is 706. 681-2034. I am available um, at all times. And you so, have a social media page, yes. Kia for Kids, yes. on Facebook. Yes. They can reach you there. Kia for School Board. Right. Kia Chambers for School Board. And they so can leave like a message page. in your private mm -hmm. box. Yes. And you will get back to them. Yes. Now, what we're going to say is because you are working, you're a mom full time, and you have children yourself, mm -hmm. three boys. At least give you 24 hours. Yes. Okay. And but, you'll but get I right am back very to responsive, especially okay. to my messages on Facebook. Okay. Um, so I am in with the millennial group. <laughs> the millennial. <laughs> okay. Keeping up with social media, media, but I will respond. So okay. give me a call personally or um, send me an email. Okay. And you can find me on the Muscogee County School District site under board members as well. Okay. I am here to serve. All right. Well, thank you all so much for your hard work. And we appreciate all that you did for our kids. Thank you thank so you. much. This has been Straightforward. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Until next time, be blessed.